The dark and moody color grade is a super popular color grading choice these days, and I thought I would break down how easy it is to achieve this kind of look with your own footage. So stick around to the end because I'm going to include a bunch of bonus tips in this tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is adjust the white balance. There's a couple of ways to do that, but I'm going to go the quick way and just select the clip and hit Command Alt B. That applies the balance color effect to the clip. And instead of selecting automatic, I'm going to change this to white balance. That brings up this little color picker tool and I can click on whatever is supposed to be white in the frame to correct the white balance. So for this shot, I'm going to zoom into this barrier. Let's just go to 200% and I'm going to find this barrier. Where was it? There it is. And then using the color picker, I'll go ahead and select the white in that barrier. If I turn this off, you can see we had a slight green tint here in the white areas. And with this balance color effect applied, we now have a bit more magenta in the scene and therefore we have a more accurate white balance. I'll zoom back out to fit and just show you the before and after there one more time. That looks much better. Next, I'm going to head over to my color inspector and I'm going to adjust this color wheels correction to fix the exposure. Looking at my scopes, I'm going to bring the shadows down until they just start clipping here at the zero mark. And I'm going to adjust the highlights a little bit, just bringing them up a little bit more. I'm not too worried about the clipping in the red over here in that sand because to my eye, that looks pretty good. Next, I want to pump the contrast and I'm going to do that with a color curves adjustment. And this dark moody look is quite contrasty. So you can pump the contrast quite a bit. So I'm going to raise these highlights a little bit and then I'm really gonna pull down the shadows somewhere around here. Then I'm going to add a hue saturation curves adjustment so that I can affect these green yellow areas here in the trees and the grass. The first thing I want to do is darken all of this. So I'm going to go over to the hue versus luma curve, select this color picker, and then I'm going to just select an area of this green and yellow. Then I'll come over to this middle dot and I'll just drag that down and you can see how we're darkening all those greens and yellows. I might even move these points just further away just so we've got a slight roll off in terms of what we're dropping there. And then I'm going to adjust the saturation. I'll make similar points on this curve and I'm just going to drop the saturation a little bit. Something like that looks pretty good. I can probably even darken this a little further. And then I want to adjust the hue of these areas. So I'm going to make the same sort of points and I'm going to pull this hue down, which will make it just a little bit more of that dark moody green. I can drop the brightness a little more and I can desaturate it quite a bit. So we've done quite a lot of work in this hue saturation curves. If I turn that off and turn it back on, you can see the massive difference that that makes. You could stop right here and this would look just fine, but there are three bonus tips that I'm going to give you that will give this look that little something extra. But first, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community and it's a great place to learn new skills. I've been using Skillshare over the last few months to learn more advanced filmmaking techniques, YouTube marketing, audio production, and a whole lot more. Learning is actually quite addictive, especially because Skillshare makes it so easy and so much fun to learn. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description below or this coupon code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. You can use that free month to check out my Final Cut Pro course on the basics of Final Cut Pro or to watch a bunch of filmmaking classes to help you improve your shooting and editing skills. I am hard at work on my beginner to advanced color grading in Final Cut Pro course and that will hopefully be ready within the next month or so, which will then be available on Skillshare. If you want to be notified when that course comes out, then be sure to get on the waiting list, which I'll link to in the description down below. Whether you are a color grading master or not, Skillshare is bound to have many classes that will help you level up your filmmaking and editing craft. The great thing about Skillshare is that you can cancel before the month is over with no commitments. So there's really no risk. And if I were you, I'd go ahead and grab that free trial while you can. Let's go over the three bonus tips to finish off the dark and moody look that we're creating for this shot. The first bonus tip for you is to clean up the shadows. So if I zoom in here, let's go to 100% and I go look at some of these dark areas here in the tree, you'll see that these areas which are supposed to be black are kind of a dark green color and we want that to be true black. And that's what I mean by cleaning up the shadows. So using the same hue saturation curves, I'm going to scroll down until I see luma versus saturation and then I'm going to do a nice big roll off here and then I'm going to desaturate these blacks totally. If you have a look at what's happening over on the video scopes, you'll see that I'm removing the color from the darkest parts of the shot. Those blues and greens are being totally desaturated with this adjustment. Let's zoom back out. The second bonus tip is to add a color curves adjustment to create a fade in the shadows. 
If you're unfamiliar with a fade, essentially what that does is it changes the black point in the image so that the blacks are not totally black and you get this nice full mix soft black look in the darkest parts of the image. To do that, I'm just going to click somewhere over here to create a point and I'm going to lift the shadows up. I'm gonna do it to an extreme so you can see what it does. Notice how the darkest parts of the image are not totally black anymore. We just create that little fade. So I'm just gonna bring it up slightly. Something like that looks quite nice. It gives it somewhat of a filmic look. And lastly, the third bonus tip is to add another color wheels adjustment so that we can create some color contrast in the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a little bit of blue into the shadows, just a little bit. And in the highlights, I'm going to push a little bit of orange into the scene. It just creates a little bit of separation between the shadows and the highlights in the scene. And if I turn it off and back on again, you can see the difference that that makes. It makes the road pop out just a little bit more. So let's quickly summarize what we did to achieve this look. This was the original shot. Then we adjusted the white balance. Then we adjusted the exposure using a color wheels adjustment. Then we adjusted the contrast using a curves adjustment. And then we added a hue saturation curves adjustment to drop the saturation and luma of the yellow and the green in the scene. And we changed the hue slightly to make it a little bit more dark and moody. Then we cleaned up the shadows using a luma versus saturation curve. And we added a color curves adjustment to create a fade in the shadows. Lastly, to finish off the look, we added a color wheels adjustment to add some blue to the shadows and orange to the highlights to create the finished look. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, you will definitely enjoy my upcoming color grading course. So don't forget to join the waiting list. I'll link to it down below. And also check out this video on how to correct light and dark skin tones in Final Cut Pro.